that you can come across an old road if you need anything. It's those small acts of kindness that actually create community. And it's communities that overcome hatred and fear. Thank you, Mary. I'm going to turn this over to Joe, and Joan will be uh, taking your questions from the audience. Joe? How can we teach younger students about the issues in North, Northern Ireland without scaring them too much? Thank you. It's a very good question. <laughs> I think teaching history is very important, but how we, treat, how we teach it, it's how we tell the story that becomes either the thing that will lock them into hard feelings or release them in the understanding. So what I would always do with history is make sure the story has been told from either side of that history so that the voices that are in that history are in that history. And we're not telling them about the heavy violence, but we're telling them that uh, conflict and division can cause hurt but teach them about the peace building more than how to make the war, which is really the lesson we haven't learned from either the First or the Second World Wars. Is that okay? Thank you. Mrs. Montague, uh, this is both an observation and as well as a question. For a, when I heard your remarks last spring, it seems to me that the situation you described when you began with Brexit pictures a much more pessimistic picture today that we had back in March or April. And uh, with regard to Brexit, you mentioned particularly Neil Farage, who actually campaigned with Donald Trump uh, down in Louisiana uh, during this election period. But we, uh, what happened in Brexit is actually happening, happening in France uh, with Le Pen, uh, in the Netherlands with Wilders, Obran in uh, Hungary, and it seems to me that the only um, adult in the room is Angela Merkel, and yet in, my, in the press in my own country, uh, we, it's always pictured that uh, Merkel has invested too much in the uh, immigration and refugee settlement, and that she has jeopardized her situation with regard to being re-elected when Germany has elections next year. And I guess I would like to hear something in behalf of Merkel, as well as why are you as optimistic or not as optimistic today as you were last spring? Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I had the honour of being given the Bremen Peace Prize and was actually in Germany just before Christmas last year when Angela Merkel was trying to make a decision around whether or not she would join the bombing campaign at that stage. And she was holding her ground and it was very, very difficult for her. And unfortunately, she had to move towards that. Um, so I think leaders who take a strong stance if you are part of a community that is in that country or around that leader who is taking a different stance from a hard conversation, a hard stance, then as groups of people, you need to be sending that politician your support, whether by email or by prayer or by getting out and having gatherings where you're discussing the issue and you're supporting the view not to move towards hard attitudes or the use of violence. I think that is part of what we can do. But I go back to what I said earlier, Doctor, which is I can't cure the world, I can't heal the world. I can only start with myself. And my question is, how am I? How do I challenge my politicians when they're using hate speech? How do I challenge people that I hear around me 
if I think that that's a very hard attitude that could be difficult, um, and not challenge in a way that I'm creating a conflict with them, but trying to listen, what is driving that? What's underneath those sentiments? And is it around fear? And does that person need to be listened to and supported in talking things out? And we may not change their mind. We may have to agree to disagree, but at least we have had the conversation. And I think that that's very important. With regards to I feel less optimistic about Northern Ireland, I am concerned about Brexit. I'm concerned about the impact on our peace process. But I have good news for you. I am part of a ministerial panel that is looking at shared space and building new shared housing. And the good news is, a lot of months back, before I came out here, we cut the sword of the second shared housing area in, in Northern Ireland. So we are creating shared spaces, which is a move forward. It's taken us a long time to get there, but at least it's another step forward. So there is some good news, but thank you for your question. Hi. Um, when we're forming a community, like when you're forming a community and you said we have to have those difficult conversations with like those in a different religion or culture, how do we ask questions or bring up topics that won't offend the other party? Well, first of all, they're the things that you want to be bringing up. You have to bring up the questions that you're afraid of asking. So, and very often we're afraid of asking them because we think that's going to offend. The reality is, if you ask the question out of sort of sitting in your circle, being, being honest and open about yourself and saying, I always wondered about this. And being prepared to have a hard question asked back towards you, then that's a safe place. And what I would say is, if you are trying to create circles where community can really be created, talk to your uh, student friends who are doing the mediation course and doing restorative uh, course as well and learning how to facilitate those conversations because they are so important. One of the biggest challenges back in my home were, were challenges with church people who didn't want the violence, who did want the, the peace, and yet couldn't gather in rooms out of politeness to have the difficult conversations. They were some of the slowest groups to come in to face-to-face -face talks. And yet when you got them in, because you're coming from the right place, you're not coming from a place to hate, you're coming from the place to try and understand, that changes the conversation. And the people you're having it with recognize that. And they are equally anxious to be able to ask their questions of you um, so they understand how you feel, because they're feeling it as well. And that's the lovely thing. We have much more in co common in our humanity than things that divide us. And curiosity, it's interesting, I always think human curiosity is a wonderful blessing, and we don't recognize it. Because it was when I was bringing groups together from either side of the interface of those peace walls, one of the big drivers to have them have conversations was their curiosity about what do they think of me? What do they think of us? So curiosity is a wonderful driver for a good, robust conversation. Mary, thank you for your presentation. Thank um, you. You mentioned, uh, I'll try to do this without feedback. Um, you mentioned how do you challenge your politicians um, when they engage in that first level of escalation, hate speech. Um, you had a politician, Boris Johnson, who engaged in that very much. and It, it was very easy to take pot shots and criticize and now you're in this Brexit situation where you're realizing the implications financially 
and what you said, border-wise to peace. Um, did, in your opinion, Boris Johnson get challenged by the British people, um, or did they cave in to fear? Boris Johnson's very interesting character because one of the strong characteristics of Boris is that he can be very charming. He's not a politician that lives on the island I come from. He is over in Westminster. So I had no direct you know, contact, obviously, with Boris Johnson. But however, we did have meetings and conversations and dialogues about Brexit were with others who were thinking of voting in a certain way. We had honest conversations looking at what Boris Johnson was saying um, and others like him. Uh, the sad thing is that he took a lead. He broke away from the rest of his party and he took a lead in his party in a different direction from the main stead of his party. Um, and at the end of it, as soon as the thing happened, he actually walked away. So I think there's learning. There's learning for us for the future. That if we find we have a politician who is not being upfront or perhaps giving us a nice spiel because it's what we want to hear out of fear, then I think with the people around us, we have the conversations about that politician. That's the only thing you can do, or that I could do in those circumstances. I'm not sure if you know if you find yourself in those circumstances what you would do, but certainly if I had have been living on the island and able to go to his rallies, for example, I would have attended a rally and I would have challenged. But I definitely challenged people around me to look beyond the rhetoric he was using. Thank you. Folks, this is a song, and the slides are the price that we pay of, for division.
Thank you very much. We appreciate your attendance. We know how busy you are. And thank you, Mary, for a wonderful presentation, very thought-provoking and hot-tugging. Thank you very much.